Hmm. You click the video. All these videos on YouTube and you choose mine. But why did he click it? What are you trying to tell me? You want me to break down the ending of U Season 4 Part 1 and go over all our theories for what's going to be happening next time? Hmm. I can do that. I can do that for you. Because you complete me. So throughout this video, we're going to be... Sorry about that, D don't know what happened there. You is back, and throughout this video, we're gonna be going through the brand new entry and everything that happens in it. If you wolf this video, I wolf you. Then please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. Now, season three saw Joe murdering love, faking his own death, dropping his son Henry off at the neighbors, and him traveling out of the city of love to track down Marianne. Unable to find her, lovable psychopath stalker Joe ended up going out to London after being told that she was at an art fair in our nation's great capital. Joe managed to track her down, but after realizing that she wanted nothing to do with him, he decided to leave her alone. Marianne called Joe a murderer, and she was sickened by the fact he killed Love and countless other. He makes a promise to prove that he's not that man, and since then he's been going under the name Jonathan Moore, which was given to him by an assassin named Elliot. Hired by Love's father, he was sick of the constant death, and he wanted to give Joe an out in the form of a new identity. Marianne knew he was alive though, and he was told he had to kill her so that they could finally close the chapter on Joe, or, or, or was it Will? Now he faked her death, and unlike previous seasons, Joe actually doesn't do much murdering in this first part. Instead, the story centers around the Eat the Rich killer, who's picking off his new circle of friends one by one. It's very much a you done it, with us watching Joe being taunted by the killer as he tries to unmask who they are. Now in the end, this is revealed to be Reese Montrose, a man of the people who announces that he's running for mayor. The clues are all there from the off, and in the first five minutes, Joe is given his book titled Good Man in a Cruel World. At the dinner party in episode one, Joe also looks about and wonders who the killer could be, and the first person who talks to him is of course Reese. So, which one are you? <laughs> you are Jonathan. Reese very much sees himself as someone who's making a change for the good, and he's going to do this by stomping out inequality. I was lucky enough to see the season twice before making this video, and upon meeting him, we get a chapter that chronicles his childhood. Born into poverty and raised by a single mother, he found out he was the son of a duke, and this sent him into the 1% of the 1%. He promised to clean things up, and he clearly finds common ground with Joel in the club they go to in episode 1. He says, when you never had money, and you eventually get it, it feels like you never really had it at all. Joe says that the rich feel almost like a different species, and this clearly connects with Reese, who wants to help out desperate people. Another species. Exactly. Now, the idea of people being desperate is laced throughout the show, and early on, Joe saves his colleague Malcolm's girlfriend Kate from a group of muggers. In his flat, Malcolm thanks him while spouting off a monologue about how people are trying to bring down the rich, which very much sets up the theme for this season. We see just how wicked, self-centered, and up their own asses they are, which is exemplified in one of the main antagonists Rold. You actually don't mind that there's a killer taking them down, and I found myself hoping that Rold got steamrolled. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Now Reese is desperate for a team up with Joe after he learns who he is, and he's collected an orgy of evidence on all his past deeds. Joe is very much looked down upon by the new group of friends, and I don't know why he wasn't just like, I can't be bothered with this, I'm off. But bothered he is, and he finds himself going along to all sorts of events when trying to crack the case. Now Reese murders Malcolm, and he leaves his body in Joe's flat. Joe ends up having to dispose of this, and it inadvertently throws him closer to Kate. She very much becomes the trademarked you of the season, and we'll talk about the role that she could play in part two. Interestingly, Marianne isn't in this part of the season all that much, but I do think they're going to bring her back for the next one. However, it is possible that Joe will end up flying back to Paris so we can have a proper season there. Every season so far has taken place in a new location, and I was surprised that we didn't get this one there. I think things will come full circle from last time, with us heading out there for the final part, or potentially season 5 down the line. If he's in danger of being caught in England, knowing Marianne is out there might seal the deal for him, and he could end up returning there to find her again. However, there's also the possibility that the assassin finds out she's still alive. Love's father would be furious that he's not actually killing the people that he pays him for, and he might travel out there to tie up loose ends. Saying that though, Elliot does seem like he's above it now, and we do get that FaceTime scene with him in episode 2, where he says he's beyond it. And that takes us into the theory time. Theory time. Theory time. So Love's dad could find out from Elliot that Joe's still alive, and he may send his goons to use Marianne as bait. 
Joe would want to save her because she's the woman he loves and it would also provide the perfect opportunity for him to win her back. Now initially when she sees him, she does smile, but then it, it probably dawns on her how unlikely it is that he's randomly showed up in London at the same market that she's at. And probably all the murders as well. I think Joe thinks he can genuinely win her back though, and this coming together from the assassin plot makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Joe going head to head with Love's father to save the person he loves would be a new way to take the show, and it would give Joe a reason to re-enter Marianne's life. Any reaction? Now it all ramps up to a murder mystery weekend out in the countryside at Wayne Manor from Batman 1989. After recognising them gargoyles from the front gate in episode 4, I had to look it up, and yes, that is where Michael Keaton hung around at in the film. Speaking of other movies, there's definite shades of glass onion here, with a rich asshole motif of course carrying over from that too. Several real murders happen, and one gets pinned on Kate, with Joe helping to dispose of the body. However, with no one else to really blame, Joe becomes the number one suspect, and he's hunted by Roald. Roald almost shoots him earlier, and both these events are actually foreshadowed early on when he brings up Dick Cheney. Didn't your own vice president shoot someone in the face? Obsessed with Kate, he's been looking for a reason to take out the potential love interest, and he attempts to kill Joe at several points. After convincing everyone that Joe is the killer, he chases him out into the woods, but the cunning fox gets the upper hand and manages to take him down. At this point, Reese steps in, knocks Joe out, and he takes the pair to a dungeon located probably, probably left of the Batcave. Now in more Batman similarities, we get a moment akin to the Riddler wanting to team up with Batman and it does give us some clues about what could happen next time. Here the villain monologues and he says that he has a plan to pin all the murders on roll. His original plan was to frame Joe for Malcolm's murder and that kind of made him realise that a dead person can't protest their innocence. Thus he wants Joe to kill Roll to show his loyalty, but Joe ends up refusing. Reese sets the mansion on fire and says that if Joe can escape and meet him in London that he'll reconsider letting him back in. Joe not killing Roald could potentially show he's changed and maybe, maybe he isn't the bad guy Marianne thinks he is. Spoiler alert, he still is. Anyway, Joe saves Roald and the rest of the group finally accept that he's not the killer. Back in the capital, Joe has an awkward exchange with Kate where he refuses to go for a drink with her because he suspects it'll evolve into something more. I think going forward, both Reese and Kate will become the main plot threads in part 2 that will both intertwine with one another. Throughout the season, we learn about Kate's past and what happened to her parents, which I think sets up things to come. Now, firstly, her mother was a supermodel called Greta who cracked up and attempted to end her own life. Kate was then shipped off to boarding school and this happened instead of her father looking after her. We learn his name's Tom Lockwood and that he's also one of the most powerful men on the planet. Lockwood is known as an activist banker and he takes companies, strips them for parts and screws over the workers so that they're left with nothing. He sicks the police on protesters, cleanses CEO records of sexual harassment claims and also gets well water reports signed that lead to children getting cancer. He never hits the thumbs up button, never subscribes and Kate says that he's the worst man alive. I think this clearly sets him up to be the target of Reese and I can imagine that Tom will be brought into part 2. Now Kate wants him out as well, and I think it would be really interesting if Joe actually had to team up with Reese to take him out to win her love. However, I think what's more likely is that he'll stop Reese. Whereas the previous seasons have closed out with Joe focusing on a new girl, here we see him staring at Reese on a TV screen, saying that he'll do anything to stop you. Not you, not you, Reese. You know, I was watching an episode of uh, You where measles came up. Wait, wait, wait. When did I mention measles? I don't know. It was on you. What, 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 what was on me? What are you talking about? My, is this a joke? I, know. I don't even know it what you're talking about. It was on you. It was on you. I've never had... Raymond, I've never had measles. What are you talking about? This is stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You. What is you. He talking about? It's called you. I've never... Anyway, I can see these threads coming together, and then possibly when Joe's destroyed everything this side of the country like a Liz Trust budget, he can go to Paris on the search for Marianne. I can see that being the logical conclusion of the entire thing, and with Tom Lockwood getting a big mention, I think this will be the perfect villain for part 2. He might end up with Kay though, and they do keep calling him Captain America, who of course ended up with a British Peggy Carter. Henry is also still out there too, and Joe did promise at the start of the season that he would go back to him. I'd love to see season 5 potentially having him return to the States, but 
I am getting a bit ahead of myself there. Now as for my thoughts on this season, I didn't really like the beginning of it and it seemed like you was just going through the motions again in a new city. However, I thought the Eat the Rich Killer was a great change up and I really enjoyed going through the mystery of who it was. They broke formula for once and instead of just making Joe the killer, they got someone in for him to face off against. There were some great inclusions here such as Sean Pertwee and seeing the rich side crew just ham it up and be the worst people possible was a nice way to get us on Reese's side. I actually see myself rooting for him more than anything but obviously Joe doesn't see himself as being that sort of killer. He won't even shoot a pheasant and it, maybe, maybe he's changed. And I'm not going to say the season was a 10. Yes, I know, I'm a 10. But I do think this is another ridiculously enjoyable ride, even if it does get off to a bumpy start. I am excited for part 2, and I'll drop my full score for the season when that's out. At the moment, I'm probably clocking in about a 7 or, or an A, but yeah, I am excited to see where the stuff with the recent cake goes. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the first part, so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are in competition right now and giving away Wakanda forever to 3 subscribers on the 15th of February and all you have to do to be one of the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the season. We pick the comments at random on the 15th and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of The Last of Us which will be linked on screen right now. We're going through it week by week pointing out all the easter eggs in it so definitely head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been Paul. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.